left with many unanswered questions from an examination of the written sources, some of which I'd like to put to Stephen Young, an experienced local archaeologist and Roman expert. First, the Battle of Watling Street. That's a Saxon name. Do we have any idea what the Romans named it? No. I've seen many possible sites listed, with one actually being towards the West Country. The popular assumption is that it took place on Watling Street. Is there any archaeological evidence to support that? Archaeologically speaking, it is very difficult to actually uh, say anything about the Boudican Revolt in terms of the potential battle on Watling Street. What we'd need to have is the evidence, the physical, artifactual evidence of the event. And what I've got here is a table of uh, real period pieces and replica arms of the period. The sort of thing that you would probably find if you were looking at the battle site and you were actually locating any archaeological evidence. It, battle sites are notoriously difficult to actually analyse and find of any period. And you can, only, you can only actually work on the material that you can find from the plough soil itself. So if we were to find a site, then we would need to find evidence, particularly of the, the Roman army, which was uh, mass-produced, highly effective work, uh, artifacts and material, from the swords, the helmets, the armour, and even the pilum, to the arrowheads, personal adornment in terms of uh, brooches and pottery, depending on what the site was. We don't know anything in terms of uh, the actual site itself, but there are several places that can be considered uh, along Watling Street in particular, between the site mainly of Magiovinium, which is just to the outside, Fenny Stratford drop shot just by to the east of Milton Keynes, right the way through Lactodorum, which is Toaster, up into Banaventa, Wilton Locks and Tripontium. There are sites that are supposedly to do with the uh, Budokan Revolt. One is far north at a place called Manseta or Manduesium, which is the preferred site of the battle and was put forward by Graham Webster way back in the 60s. And there is a potential another site to the south of the map on my right at Dunstable, which, uh, which has been put forward by Barry Horn as another potential place. There are so many places that fit the very sparse, detailed location site that Tacitus and Cassiodorus give us. But what we do have are possibilities of a site that's put forward by uh, Martin Marek Erins which is to the southeast of Lactodorum, Toaster. Southeast of Toaster at Cuttle Mill near Paulsbury, uh, where interestingly there are uh, fields which are known as large and little battlefield fields uh, from the Victorian period. And not far from there we also found evidence, geophysical evidence, of a large uh, five uh, acre, five or six acre probable marching camp a fort the size of an auxiliary fort, right in the position of uh, this plane that matches most of the detail that's given by uh, Tacitus. Another place is possibly to just around Tripontium, which is uh, near Rugby. So there's, there's lots of little sites. There's nothing down at Magiavinium. So we have nothing physical, nothing like we've got on the table here. Uh, we have a possible marching camp. Uh, and we just have the geological, morphological landscape to work on. It is likely, however, that the battle did take place within this area, because we know from the sources, Tacitus tells us that uh, Verulamium, St Albans, had been burnt, and that the Britons were moving to the north and the west. And as Steve has said, there are lots of theories, both about Watling Street and to, uh, along the Ackerman Street, it depends entirely really on how long it would have taken the Roman soldiers to have left the Isle of Anglesey and marched down to the southeast. So in terms of physical evidence, we have none. All we've got are the sources. We know it actually happened. One day somebody will find some evidence, whether it be a spearhead 
of the first century, or a series of spearheads. Personal adornment that fall, has fallen off, as in brooches. Or indeed, evidence of helmets and gladiuses, swords. These are the typical um, accoutrements of a legionnaire. The short sword and the knife. Or actually evidence of a cavalry sword, a sparta. These bits of these do survive in the ground, or it may be arrowheads where they've been fired, or indeed if we do have associated with the Romans, with the Roman sort of defense, uh, some sort of camp, possibly pottery, or armor, pieces of armor, or pieces of pelum. Those are the sort of things we'd expect from the Roman side, but weapons and possibly talk, elements of talks and things like that. If you're talking about the battle where 230 people, 230,000 people are present and they're trying to attack a force of perhaps 11 or 13,000 Romans. There is going to be a lot of detritus left after that battle. You know, the Romans are going to be outnumbered at least 10 to 1, if not nearly almost 20 to 1. So what happens after a battle? They don't necessarily clear all the bodies away. There may be actually large scale uh, pits where everybody, all the bodies are put or they might just have been left there to, to rot and therefore you would see evidence within the ground. So that's the sort of thing we expect to find elements of. And what we need to do is, as we look at the archaeology in these areas, and at the moment the organisation I work for, uh, we're looking at the Roman landscape and characterising it, and as we're doing that we are finding potential, th potential evidence to support the idea of the Boudican Revolt such as the marching camp near Cuttle Mill.